volunteers, my name is Emily, I'm an intern at Project Cure, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to test a blood pressure machine. Blood pressure machines come in all different shapes and sizes. As you can see, we have two different kinds of blood pressure machines right here in the back of the warehouse. What you're going to need to look for when you're trying to find a blood pressure machine are words like systolic and diastolic, or if you can see an attachment for blood pressure cuff. Pictures of an arm with a band on it are also good indicators that the machine you have is a uh, blood pressure machine. Once you've found your machine, you're going to need to make sure it's got a power cord. Sometimes the cords will come in these little baskets or be somehow attached to the machine. If that's not the case, you might need to ask for help to figure out where to find a working power cord. Before we can run any other tests, we need to double check that the machine will turn on. Plug the power cord into the wall and the machine into the power cord and press the power button. If you get some beeping and the screens turn on, that's a good indication that the machine is working. The next step is to look for the kind of attachments you're going to need for different tests. Here I have two different kinds of blood pressure machines. As you can see, this one takes blood pressure and also SpO2, or oxygen. So we're going to need an attachment like this for blood pressure and an attachment for SpO2 that can connect to this. On this machine over here, you can see we also take the blood pressure and the SpO2, but on top of that we'll be taking temperature. So if we turn the machine around, well, we already have our blood pressure cord attached right here. But if we turn the machine around, you'll notice we're going to need a temperature attachment and an SpO2 attachment before we can test our device. If your device tests temperature, you're going to need to look for this yellow box in the lab that has temperature probes that look like this. From this, you're going to look for the right attachment to go with your machine. You're going to need to look in this area for an SpO2 attachment. Make sure when you find the attachment that you find two parts. The extension cord that can attach to your machine and has this lock and then a finger probe. And then you'll want to make sure that this connection can lock into this mechanism and the lock can clip over the device. Blood pressure cuffs tubing is organized back here based on the kind of attachment to the device that the tubing has. You're going to want to check on your device what kind of tubing you need and then look over here for that kind of tubing. For instance, this kind of tubing will connect to the small blue blood pressure machine that we're testing in the other room. Now that we've located all of our different connections, we can attach them to the machine. Full socks will click in like that. And as you can see, I have the cord, the connection, and the probe. And the probe has a red light on the inside, which means that this connection is working and we can use it to test the machine. The next step would be to click in the blood pressure tubing. And on machines with temperature, you're going want to want to take the temperature probe that you found and connect it where it says or indicates the temperature connection, like that. We have a few materials we're going to need to gather before we can test our machines. The first thing to look for is a bottle and set of blood pressure cuffs, which will be somewhere in these cabinets. We're going to use these to test blood pressure. Next, we're going to come over to this cabinet here to retrieve the SIM cube, which we also need to test blood pressure. The SIM cube looks like this. It's got a button on the front and a bunch of indicators for different kind of blood uh, pressures you can test. We're going to need to plug the SIM cube in and ensure that it's an adult, 120 over 80. Now we're going to look for the right kind of adapter that comes with the SIM cube in its little pouch. 
that can connect to the blood pressure tubing we have on the machine. Now there's lots of different kinds of attachments and lots of different adapters, so it might take some time to find the right connection. Here I found the connection for this adapter to this blood pressure machine, and I'll attach it to the front of the SIM cube and make sure that the device locks and clicks in. Sometimes that can be a little tricky. And then I'm going to connect this end of the SIM cube to a blood pressure cuff. I'll take out the bottle, which is what I'm going to test the blood pressure on, and then I'm going to look for a cuff with the appropriate connection as well. Then I'll slide the cuff over the bottle and connect it to the SIM cube adapter. Sometimes you'll get a cord that'll have two connections on the other end of the blood pressure cuff. If that's the case, you're going to have to find a cuff that connects directly to the cord and test blood pressure on yourself. Unfortunately, we don't have any adapters for the SIM cube that'll work for a double tubing. To test it on yourself, open the cuff, wrap it around your arm, make sure it's Velcroed in place, and then hit Vitals or Start on the machine. Once we do that, you should be able to hear the machine start to run and the cuff inflate on your arm. It might be a little bit uncomfortable when you're taking your own blood pressure, but that's totally normal. Now you want to check this reading against the reading of a normal healthy adult, which is shown on the SIM cube to be 120 over 80. Since each of these values are within five of the healthy adult values, this machine is working and the blood pressure is okay. When you're taking your own blood pressure, sometimes results may vary even more. If you have any questions about the results you get for your own blood pressure, you're welcome to ask for help. To take blood pressure using the SIM cube on a machine, Simply hit the start button and you'll hear the SIM cube and the blood pressure cuff doing their job. Sometimes the device may retry or may take a little while to get an accurate reading. If you ever need to take another measurement, you should keep trying until you get an accurate reading or until you cannot get an accurate reading. So because this number is a little bit high, we'd probably want to run this test again. Once you get an accurate number within five of each value of the systolic and diastolic pressures, then you're gonna go back to the SIM cube and press this yellow button until you get to high blood pressure. Once you're here, you're going to run the test again. All right, and it looks like you have a reading of 188 over 123. This is fairly close to our desired reading of 190 over 120, which means that this machine works for high blood pressure, which is great. And now you're ready to test SpO2. To test SpO2, after double checking that the probe has a red light, simply insert your finger into the probe and keep an eye on the SpO2 measurement area. Sometimes it might take a minute or two to get a reading. As you can see, my SpO2 is 97. As long as the SpO2 value is above 90, the machine is working and you're good to go. If your machine has temperature on it, that's the next thing you're going to need to test. And to do so, you're going to need a box of disposable thermometer covers like these. To use these, simply insert the probe into 
one of the tubings. Let's see if I can pull it out. And make sure it clicks all the way on, like that. Then you're going to insert this into your mouth and wait for a reading of close to body temperature. Body temperature is 98 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. As long as you can see the thermometer climb up to within that range, you're probably good. When you have a working temperature probe, you're going to need to leave the device with about five to ten boxes of the disposable thermometer probes, and you can throw your old one away. The final thing you might need to check is printing. Now, not all devices have a printer. As you can see, this one does because of the area that allows the paper to come out of the machine. But this one, on the other hand, doesn't have the capacity to print. To print, all you need to do is find the print button and select auto or now. And if paper comes out the side of the machine with ink on top of it, then you're set. If the machine says out of paper or low paper, you're going to need to find some machine or some paper back in the warehouse over here. Paper will be back in this shelf right here. And what you're going to need to look for is the right uh, length of the paper wheel that'll fit into the machine that you have. If you don't have the right size, then it's not going to print. Sometimes your paper might be too thin or too thick for the machine to print as well. When you find the right width of paper, you might want to grab a, different, a few different rolls so that you can make sure that it's the roll and not the printer that's not working. Once you've finished testing your device, you can set it up to either be cleaned or to be fixed. Take all of the tubing that you use to test your device and keep it with the machine that you tested. You'll want to detach all blood pressure cuffs or attachments because they're going to be continued to use for testing. Put all of the cords into the box along with the machine and power cord. And then put a sticker that gives the device's diagnosis on the front. In this case, the device was working. Sometimes you might, other have, you might have other malfunctions. For instance, this machine apparently needs a temperature probe or its printer isn't working. If that's the case, leave a sticky note like this on the front of the machine or the front of the box and then take it back to where it came from. If the machine never turned on or is broken in some other way, also leave that sticky note on the device and return it to where it came from. Great! Now you've tested your machine and you're a blood pressure machine expert. Way to go!